be right there, just get my coffee. But you all know that, right? How's everybody doing? It's me, it's Marlon. I am, um, I had some ideas that I wanted to share with you. Um, they're a little different today. Uh, it, what I kind of, I guess, wanted to do was piggyback on last week's, um, piggyback on last week's video, which was, I, I just in terms of getting ready for 2024. And what I wanted to do was just share some, um, some ideas, especially for those of you that are just kind of getting started in the, in the kind of beginner phase um, and don't know where to start at all, but you want to get into sync licensing and production music and, you know, work with music libraries and get your music and TV and all, all that great stuff. So I thought what I would do is just share some ideas. They might work for you. They might make sense. You might resonate with them and you might not. And that's totally cool, but I wanted to put them on the table for you anyway. And you can decide for yourself in your own situation if they work for you. I'm going to basically just lay out a, uh, a travel kit for your 2024 journey in music licensing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to suggest is before you even research who you're going to pitch to or who you want to work with, um, the first thing I'm going to suggest is your music. Whatever it is that you're going to use, whatever tracks you're going to use to pitch your music to various music libraries, um, make sure it's the best work you have. And what I mean by that is make sure that the production value of it is as good um, as you can possibly produce. And even if you have help, that's even better. You know, maybe you have friends that are, are better at mixing than you are or have, you know, have a second set of professional ears on it. Um, it, it, it makes a big difference because you're setting a first impression. So you want the production value and quality of your track be as good as you can possibly get it. It's really, really important. Um, and I say that also because when you pitch to a lot of these music libraries, um, a very big part of what they're listening for um, is, is the production value of the tracks. How professional does it sound? How well um, recorded and mixed it does it sound? Um, there are some other very important components as well, um, being how appropriate is it for their library uh, is it in theme with what they offer? Um, and how licensable is it? Is it, is it a great track for editors, uh, video editors that is? Um, some libraries will specialize in certain styles and genres, um, and some have a catalog full of every kind of music you can think of. So that's why I mentioned how appropriate is your music for that library. Maybe they specialize in trailer music and you're a singer-songwriter. Um, and it might not be a match. However, um, this, th that would be in the part where you're researching the library to see what they have in their catalog and if your music fits them. We're not there yet. Just make sure whatever it is, the music that you're going to submit to them, make sure it's the best that you can possibly, possibly produce. To answer a, a very common question is, um, do I have to submit music that is available for licensing or can I submit music that is already in someone else's catalog or has already been placed in TV? Um, there's a couple answers to that. I guess the, the basic and broad answer would be, yes, you can submit music to a library that is already placed somewhere else um, and has already had placements, provided that the music library that you're submitting to doesn't explicitly say the music must be licensable and available. Um, if they say they only want to hear music or only want you to submit music that is available to them so they can basically check it off and run with it, um, that's a whole different thing. Um, but otherwise, you're showing them what you are capable of. And whether that music's available or not, it's, hey, here's, here's what I got, here's what I'm capable of doing. Um, and then maybe there's a dialogue where you can discuss um, what you're going to write for that library. Maybe it's something similar to what you submitted, but with some variations or a little different, or maybe they have some tips or requests. So, yes, you can submit music on, in most cases, not all, but in most cases you can submit music that has already been submitted elsewhere. Um, it's, it, the, the problem becomes where is if someone owns that publishing or if you've signed off that publishing to another library, and this library actually wants that track, then no, you can't proceed 
there, obviously, because you have contracts in place that won't allow that. But I feel like I'm getting a little too far into this. Basically, make sure the best work you have is what you're setting that first impression with. I'm going to stop there. Okay, and the second one is, uh, I said I was going to kind of focus this toward the beginners, but I'm going to break this into two halves. Um, the first one is going to be for beginners, and that is, um, assuming you don't have any placements, you don't know where to start, you're, you have some music maybe, um, and you're like, I want to get this music placed, what would I do, where would I go? The first thing I'm going to suggest is um, research who and where you're going to submit the music to. And where do you begin? I would suggest Google. I would also suggest Facebook. Try and find some forums. Uh, you can use search terms like sync licensing, production music, music libraries. Those are three really great ones um, that will bring up a ton of uh, resources and, and various spots you can find information on this. Um, just use social media. Use Google, use YouTube, um, Instagram, hashtags. Uh, there is so many resources out there now. Uh, when I started, there was no resources. There was no YouTube. There was no Facebook. So now it's, it's incredible in that there is so many resources. So use those keywords. Use your various social platforms to find who's talking about what. You'll learn so much diving into these. Some are, some are courses. Some are seminars and master classes and workshops. Um, and whether you have a budget or you don't, it's all out there. Um, it, not to say that only free stuff is, is the best. Like There are some really great courses out there where people have worked really hard with their experience and knowledge and put together curriculums that are incredible and really, really do give you an advantage and a leg up. Um, and, and then there's some free stuff out there too. So basically learn, learn the terminology. Um, it, that it's of course it, it's going to take time. It's going to take research, but anything worth <laughs> worth pursuing is is worth putting in the the time and effort. So um, research music libraries, production music, sync licensing, um, and e even if you typed into Google, um, you know, it, let's let's take that a step further. Go to Chat GPT and type in what are the best libraries of 2023 music libraries. You can try different keywords and. and form the question in different ways. And even AI will give you some, um, give you a ton of resources and, and places that you could potentially submit to. Once you have a list of music libraries that you could potentially want to work with, then you're gonna research the hell out of them. Uh, and I can't stress this enough. Like, listen to their catalog, listen to what they have, Look at their socials. Go find you know Instagram and, and all these different platforms that they're also on, and look to where they are um, getting their music placed and and who they're working with. Um, there's there's a lot to be learned uh, and a lot to be gained from you learning about them. It, it strengthens the potential relationship that you are hopefully going to develop with them. So that's where you start. You you hit social media and you learn. Um, you research, you find out these different libraries, and there are so many different shapes and sizes of music libraries. So that's where you start. And how do you know if you're fit for them? Well, listen to your music and listen to their catalog. That's going to inform you, um, A, where your music sits on, on a level of quality. Um, you're going to hear some great stuff, and you're going to hear some stuff that you might be like, I, I can do that. I, you know. Another tip would be to Listen to the TV programs that are using this music. Um, not that everyone enjoys reality television, but they certainly do have ratings. So listen to the music that's used in these, these various TV programs, um, specifically how the music is being used. So as one example, a lot of these are competition-based. So I think of like um, Cake Boss, you know, and they're competing, right? And there's a lot of different programs like that. There's a lot of... Um, tension and, and disappointment and there's a whole kind of breakdown of this and how it's used. Uh, transitions are another big component of that and if that's something that these are elements in your music um, then that's great that that helps you kind of narrow down a target. Um, maybe maybe your music is more ethereal and ambient um, and which might be a little more focused towards you know documentaries or things that don't quite have the dynamic narrative that 
that some of these reality shows have. Um, but again, you learn all this from studying the music that is being used. So it's, it's really important. And the other side of that is if you're watching this and you already have some placements, you, you have some, some mileage under your belt and, and you, you're just looking for more and you want to keep going down that path, um, the same thing, take what has worked for you, you take your successes and study them. Um, you know, it's an old kind of a business mindset to look at two sides of your business. One is what needs help and what needs um, work and improvement. And we can apply that to ourselves as producers and composers and say, well, what do I need to strengthen and bring up? Um, but also don't lose sight of what is working and to develop that more as well. So if you already have placements, look at your pro, find out what was getting placed. Are there specific tracks? that are getting placed more than others and what so about those tracks you know is is working and hitting maybe maybe it's the publisher maybe there's a, an editor that's found your tracks in a library and they just like those tracks and they keep coming to those tracks or uh, there could be a number of reasons but maybe it's the instrumentation maybe it's how subtle it is or maybe it's how dynamic it is or a million things but study what works um, and that's that's a big takeaway too because uh, I think a lot of times it's it's overlooked or it's, it's well, I'm just going to keep writing music and keep throwing it out there. If you don't pay attention to what's actually working, then you're not getting as far ahead as you possibly can. Again, I'm, <laughs> I'm going a little too deep into this, but um, I, I think a lot of you understand what I'm saying. I want to take just two seconds to thank Mayono for, I, I guess, essentially sponsoring this video according to... <laughs> YouTube terms and policy um, for sending me the WM820 wireless microphone series. Um, I've been using this through this entire video. There's a, a receiver unit that fits into the shoe of the top of the camera uh, with applicable cables. Um, I say that because there's two cables. There's one that goes to your phone uh, and there's one that goes for your camera and they're obviously different jacks and somebody used the wrong jack, even though they're clearly labeled and couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting sound. These have been great for me. They let me get a wider shot. I can show you what's going on for future videos around the studio. Uh, if I'm demonstrating something, um, less cables. It comes with a whole bunch of goodies. Uh, there's a pack for carrying it. There's a, a couple uh, wind screens, wind filters, dead cats, and the, the, as well as obviously the charging cables. Um, they'll, get six, they'll get six hours on one charge. Um, this was on my jeans when I was doing the majority of the video. I have a little um, lav mic that obviously comes with it. Um, yeah, and they've been they've been great. There's a volume control on the on the side of these, um, so you just set your your gain from, on your camera as well as as this, and you're you're good to go. I'll put a link in the description. You check it out for you. It's not an affiliate link, uh, and you decide yourself. Thank you, Mayono, for sending me these. And um, yeah, let's get back to sync licensing. Again, for those of you just starting out, don't know where you're going, don't know where you're gonna start, um, kind of a, a productivity tip I might suggest is have somewhat of a schedule. Um, and respectfully, I know we all have different available time, different capacities for how much time we can you know, put into this, um, maybe weekends, evenings, nights, mornings, whatever your specific situation is. Try and make a schedule that helps you keep consistent, helps you keep moving. And that could be two hours a day, it could be two hours a week, it could be, you know, you know, I only have 30 minutes in the morning before I go to work or whatever, whatever your situation is, try and make something consistent. Um, and why I say that is that it helps fuel motivation to be able to see progression and to be able to see that let's, for example, say you can do an hour a day. Maybe it's 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, or an hour straight, whatever it is. And maybe you're going to try and write one track a week. Um, whatever it is, that's also another important side point I want to just kind of mention is that make it achievable. Don't set a ridiculous goal that, although you're, you're gung-ho for it and you really want to hit that goal, um, try and make what I'm referring to as smaller kind of micro pieces of a bigger goal. So chip away at a bigger goal. So start with making your schedule 
reasonable, something you know you can commit to, and it's not going to be like, ah, oh, I don't have three hours today. Just make it whatever you can afford to do, and do that consistently. Um, and maybe it's writing a track a week, and if that's the case, you could start with, you know, say, well, today I'm going to just lay down the foundation, chord progression. Or maybe it's a melody that you're going to kind of work with. Um, maybe it's going to be the, the rhythm or the, the drums, drum programming. You're going to do that first. Ha whatever you're um, most comfortable with in, as far as your workflow, and you're going to know better than I what your workflow is or what you are most comfortable doing. What I'm suggesting is break that down into smaller achievable pieces. And then by the end of the week, and I'm just using this week as an example. It could be three days, it could be two weeks. Again, whatever works for you. But the point is, make it smaller, achievable pieces. And then by the end, it's, at least for most of us, it feels good to look back and go, yeah, that, that was a great week. That was a productive week. I hit all my, my goals and everything that I said I was going to do. So try and make a schedule. If you have to use a calendar, a phone, whatever that is, however you want to schedule that um, and, and stick to it and make those pieces and keep that going. You can have bigger goals, uh, three months out, two months out, whatever it is, but, but try and make these smaller um, achievements and wins and celebrate them and, and motivate yourself with them and share them too. Throw them on social media, track drums today, feeling good onto bass tomorrow, what, whatever it is. So celebrate those small wins, uh, use that as fuel and motivation to keep going forward. Okay, and this, this one I think can apply to everybody at every level, and I think it's pretty cool. I often will try this myself, which is try and do things backwards. Rewire your brain. I mean, the neural pathways, you develop habits, you, you develop muscle memory, and your brain becomes very comfortable in um, these, these routines and processes that you you follow. Think about doing things differently. Like force yourself to to think about it differently. So if you're so as an example, if you're um, if you're most comfortable with starting with a chord progression, and that's how you write your your tracks. You start with a chord progression, then you layer everything on top of that. Try starting with a rhythm. Use that as your as your guide to the track or or maybe it's a melody, or maybe it's a sound, an ethereal kind of pad or escape or something like that. Just try and approach once in a while. Try, try and just turn things upside down. Make your brain think differently because new ideas will come from that. Um, it's, it's great to have process and, and structure to how you do things. Of course, that'll keep you uh, productive and, and efficient, but as far as creativity goes, it's always good to throw in something new. Try, try things that you wouldn't otherwise think of, and, and how we do that is, is trick our brain to by doing things that we wouldn't normally do. So instead of sitting down at the piano, if that's your go-to writing instrument, um, try, try something else. Maybe write with a friend, and they'll have different ideas. Uh, try, you know, open tuning your guitar. Try and force yourself to be different. Even if the idea doesn't work, that's okay. Just try and be different and make your brain think differently and maybe new inspiration and new ideas will come from starting down that path. Yet again, for the third time, I'm making this too complicated. But that's my one piece of advice is that try to do things that are different that will open up new creative doors for you. And this last one, um, again, applies to everybody and anybody, is don't stop learning, research. I, I don't know how to encapsulate. I don't know what to call it, you know, as, as in one kind of thing, but consistently learn at whatever level you're at. Learn more. Take the time to, I mean, we're all, we all have various moments of time. If you can be on social media and, and scanning on your phone, all these different things, then you have time to learn about this industry that is sync licensing and production music. Um, learn the terminology, learn the new trends coming out, learn the new new trends in music. You know, what, what's hot, what's, you know, placing. It happens in, in, in fashion and it happens in art and all different formats and mediums. And, and obviously it happens in music too. So um, 
study what what is happening who's who wh- wh- you know what's what's changing try and stay ahead of the curve or at least informed um, as to what's happening in the industry and there's a lot of a lot of negativity a lot of um, you know scary things happening as well but that's that's change that's going to happen in any industry so try not to get discouraged or, or kind of sucked de- into that that black hole there's there's a lot of scary stuff out there but there's a lot of great things there too and there's a lot of opportunity I believe um, it never before has there been so many resources out there and, and some will argue that well it's oversaturated I would argue that's an opportunity for you to stand out and be different and and step ahead and and just be determined and keep working outwork everybody around you um, so just try and be easier said than done. I get it, but I'm cheering for you. I know you can do it. Just try and be optimistic and learn about the industry. Um, as I said, the, the, the lingo, the, the terminology, the, the various libraries, what's happening, what they're doing, who they're working with, um, you know, who's out there offering you know, knowledge and, and, and courses and paid or otherwise, and, and just learn and connect with new people. Find these various publishers and music libraries on their socials and follow them and watch what they're doing and what's happening. And again, that can inform your plan and your goals to see what they're doing. Um, so just don't stop learning. That's very cliche. Uh, we've all heard it a million times, but um, I, I, cliche or not, I don't care. I think these things are important and actually uh, quite helpful. So that's that's my advice. That's my, my travel kit for your journey in 2024 if you're kind of just beginning um, and getting out there uh, just keep your head up it's there, there's going to be challenges and struggles uh, I still have them too and I'm almost 20 years in it's it it happens it's just not those things aren't going to go away um, but just keep putting one foot in front of another and and you got this thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate you cheers